Next, on Sports Illustrated, how does anyone recover from losing a young friend and teammate? First thing I see is a silver convertible. This is one of the worst feelings uh, I mean I ever had. Chris Ballard visits a high school team that forged triumph from tragedy and gave an entire community the healing gift of morning glory. Williamsport, Maryland is a tiny town on the banks of the Potomac, little more than a mile square. Earlier this year, two of its teenagers were killed in a car accident on the night of their prom, including a star pitcher for the high school baseball team. Somehow in the wake of this unspeakable tragedy came unimaginable triumph. Sports Illustrated senior writer Chris Ballard shares the story of a small town's morning glory. In sports, there's so many of these cliches about coaches and teams. And one of the things that drew me to this story is you hear those cliches, the power of a team, the power of a coach, the power of a community to, to rally around something. And, and often they fall short in the execution. This was that rare case where it all aligned. I had had some things happen before in my life, but not to the extent where it's just something that doesn't seem possible. The kid who had been invincible his whole life, you know, he was the superior one, and that that could have happened. Just uh, like a, a sickening feeling that it's tough to explain. A California man is facing murder charges after an accident Thursday that killed Angels rookie pitcher Nick Aiden Hart and two others. There's two people who really taught me to love the game of baseball. And the first was my dad when I was real young, and the second was definitely Nick. He was lucky that he had a friend like Nick that had the same passion, the same interest, the same love. You know, Nick was blessed with unbelievable athletic and baseball ability. I met Nick when I was about seven. We were playing t-ball. And then by the time we got to Little League, everybody knew who he was. If he was pitching, it was kind of an event. Nick was the, rated one of the top five prospects in the United States. You would show up at games, there'd be 32 radar guns behind. I mean, it was like a carnival. That's just the type of baseball town that it is, where word spreads and people really have appreciation for when a, a truly great player comes along. Williamsport is a small blue collar town in Northwest Maryland that is on the way to everywhere, but rarely a destination itself. Walt Williams has lived here for 53 years was the president of the Little League for 13 years back when Nick and David played. There's not much more than baseball in this town. Used to be a big tannery over here. Well, they laid off hundreds of people. The coal-fired power plant was taken offline. That's hard times. In this little town, baseball means a lot. Williamsport is the kind of town where generations of families and generations of men come up through baseball. This is a town where every kid grows up dreaming of doing what Nick Aidenhart did. One of the things that made Nick Aidenhart such a hero in Williamsport is that he got out of there. He went on and had success at the major league level. After Nick's accident, David made an interesting decision. He decided to come back to Williamsport the place all the other kids had always dreamed of leaving. I think I wanted to come back to Williamsport because I had such a great experience and I had so many people from this town who helped me. Since Nick's accident, every time I've ever stepped on a baseball field, I'd always thought about Nick. Once I get out to that mound, the thought crosses my mind, you know, this is the mound that Nick sit on. 
There's nothing more peaceful than being out on the field by yourself to gather your thoughts. When I got the head coaching job, I was well aware that people had a right to be skeptical of a 23-year-old taking over a program. The only way we'd prove them wrong is by what we did on the field and by the way we played the game. David gets the head coaching job at Williamsport High, but there's some concern around town and grumbling among the locals and parents. After all, he only looks a little bit older than the players themselves. But in that first season, he has immediate success. The team goes 17 and five and makes it all the way to the state semis, largely because of their ace junior pitcher, Brendan Cauliflower. He was a good boy. He always strived to do his best at everything he did, and he did. If you knew anything about pitching, you knew he had it. You know what I mean? You knew he had it. He just had something in that pitch of his. Brennan was an athlete ever since I could remember. Pick up a ball and throw it. Couldn't believe his arm. Always thought from the time he was Three, four years old, he was going to be a pitcher of some sort. Just was really good at it. And people realized it. This is where Brendan and I started pitching when he was about eight years old. Teaching the fundamentals and the mechanics. A lot of times, I'd just sit here on a bucket, a white bucket, and catch. The mound's over here. Got a, got a few weeds growing in it. He has a lot of good memories. <clears throat> Brendan was a pitcher in every sense of the term. Through low 80s, he had a really good curveball. He had a changeup he could throw. When he took the ball and he was going to the mound, you were surprised if you didn't end up winning. Brendan was our ace. His curveball would make kids look goofy in the box. He really shut down every team. Brendan was at the high point of his life. He was a big man on campus, you know, great pitcher, going to prom with a beautiful girl. She was a jaw dropper of our school, basically. She was very good looking. Very. As a team, we would always kind of pick on Brendan, like, Brendan, so how'd you pull this off? You got the best looking girl here. He definitely lit up like a light bulb when she was around. I'll never forget that day. He was down at the city park taking the prom pictures. I took a picture with him, gave Sam a hug, and told her she looked real nice. Just sat and watched. He was extremely happy. Together, they were just a really good looking couple. Pulled away in their convertible, too, and made it even better. Got that fresh looking car. He was all smiles the whole day. Nothing could bring him down. It was their party, and people were there to watch them. Put, up, put your hand on her hip. There you go. <laughs> After prom, my phone rang. That's a kid calling me. He was like, uh, "There, there's an accident on uh, Wrench Road." And I'm like, "Really?" So I called Brendan. He uh, never picked up. I was just kind of really nervous at the time. Dad asked me what went wrong. I let him know. He's like, he's like, "Well, why don't we drive out to Wrench Road?" Drive and I'm getting a little bit more nervous. By that time, I already called Colin, I called Chad, I called Haley, I called Austin, I called Cody, like everyone in our group made sure they're okay. And I was like, they're the only ones not answering. I go over the hill, and the uh, first thing I see is the uh, silver convertible. And uh, yeah, that was, that was one of the worst feelings uh, I mean, I ever had. Their, their car is was, was like crunched. It was, pretty bad. 
So I remember screaming. I was like, it's Slum, it's Slum, Dad. And three of the worst words that anyone could hear <clears throat> that night when I walked out on the porch at one o'clock, around one o'clock in the morning with a commotion. You open up the door and there stands some police officers. <clears throat> you look up at your son. <sighs> Excuse me. You said, Dad, Brendan's dead. <laughs> the bottom, <clears throat> the bottom just falls out of your heart. He was my world. He taught me so much that I never got to tell him. <laughs> I woke up the next morning, and it was about 5 o'clock. You know, my phone was just going off. And as soon as I saw just the combination of people that I had missed calls from and messages, he knew that something was really not right. I flipped her a text message, and um, you know, through the text, I was kind of able to figure out what had happened. And I just sent out a text to the players, and I said, "I love you guys, and I'll be at the field if you need me." You know, I needed to go sit next to them, and I needed them to be next to me. That morning, the team and the town gathered at the field, just as they had when Nick Adenhart died. I think what David had to do was tremendously hard. He can't just tell these kids, look, it's going to be all right, because it wasn't going to be all right. And he knew that. He'd gone through it with Nick. Up next, the Williamsport Wildcats begin their chase. To get back on the ball field really, really helped us a lot. Of the unlikeliest of dreams. We are doing something that is far bigger than us. We are playing for Brendan's family. Win today so they can come watch us play tomorrow. Earlier this year, Williamsport, Maryland was struck by tragedy when a car accident killed two of its teenagers, including a star pitcher on the high school baseball team. What should have followed on the diamond was a season best forgotten. But instead, from this community's morning emerged glory. All that week, the players mourned, but the following Saturday, they had to play a state playoff game, and it fell only hours after Brendan's funeral. Brendan's in this casket. My best friend's going to the ground, and now I got to play a game. We're crying, walking into the dugout. I mean, that, that was honestly was just like horrible, honey. At this time, we would like to release balloons in honor of Brenda Cauliflower and Samantha Kelly. May you two rest in peace. Brendan wasn't there. And uh, it was very difficult for me to go that day. You know, you have this one terrible thing, and then, uh, you know, the baseball started. It just it, it kind of helped bring a little bit of light to the day. We all knew that we had to do it for everybody here, and especially for Brendan and Sam's families. In talking to these kids, one of the things that really came through was how important it was seeing Brendan's family there. It was like having Brendan there to a certain extent, and I, I think it really empowered the team. It gave them this drive, this, this reason to play. Those kids played hard. The final score was 22 to nothing, and we threw a no-hitter. Basically, this game was really dedicated to him. To get back on the ball field, it really, really helped us a lot. So their next opponent is Liberty High, and this is the top seed in the region. Williamsport comes in as a huge underdog. You know, they've, they've lost Brendan. Their second best pitcher, Tyler Byers, has a fractured ankle. 
which leaves Warren Phelps with Zach Lucas, who's the team's best hitter, but he's sort of a pitcher out of necessity only, and he's got to throw him out there as his starter and really just hope. So they're going out there, and they're not expecting much, and they beat Liberty High. And that was the moment that if you talk to these guys, looking back, they said, maybe we can do something here. If we just win these next three games, we're there. And that's basically what our mindset had to be, was let's get there. Let's do it for him. Number six, let's go. The thing that matters is that we kept winning for Brendan. We kept moving on, accomplishing something. We are doing something that is far bigger than us. We are playing for Brendan's family so that they have a reason to come watch us play. You know, win today so they can come watch us play tomorrow. So after they beat Liberty, they win three games in a row, and they make it all the way to the state championship game. You just feel that there's a, a bigger thing out there following these guys around. It just seemed like they were doing it for a different reason. And now Williamsport's headed to the state championship game. There are over a thousand fans there, and the majority of them are from Williamsport. And these guys were so pumped up by this moment. We knew what we wanted. We, we wanted to bring a state championship trophy home and show John, Gale, and Chad if we were doing it for Brendan. I kind of stressed to them that whatever adversity we face today is nothing compared to what we've been through together. We can make it through whatever's going to happen. Uh, we go up one nothing, and we're leading all the way until the seventh inning. Patuxent, they have a guy on third, and they squeezed. And we get out of the inning 1-1. One, one. We kind of go back and forth, got, you know, you get some guys on base here and there, and then we get to the ninth. Byers leads off with a base hit, so I put Tyler Martin in to run for him. The next pitch, I took off for second, and then I uh, stole, got safe there, and then Ryan Butts came up and sacrificed bunting me to third. So I say to Tyler, we're going to squeeze. We're going to do it. Williamsport Wildcat State Championship ring. It's in memory of B6C, Brendan Cauliflower. Then on the other side, it has Brendan in a baseball with his number six and a, a P on there for pitcher. I'll never forget him. To win after something like this happened takes a lot more than just talent. You gotta have heart. You gotta have heart to do that, and our team had heart. You still have that feeling of there's still something missing from this. You know, Brendan should be here with us. I was just so happy that together we were able to put this ending on this tragic situation. Couldn't have been any more than like a scene out of a movie. It was a great ending. I think it's a story in some ways about the power of perseverance and about the power of sport and the way that it can do things it wasn't meant to do.